Robert. How are you? Hey, Freddie. I hear we have Nikolai Tesla here to interview. Hello, Mr. Mm -hmm. Tesla. Yes, and, and um, Paul Walker said he was going to be polite and let uh, Mr. Tesla go first. Yes, I know you have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of requests for you, Paul, so you'll be next. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate he said, that. He said, thank you, ma'am. And uh, Mr. Tesla, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. He said, it's my pleasure. First thing I want to ask is, what was your spiritual mission on this uh, earthly plane as Nikolai Tesla? He said, my mission was to awaken humanity to a broader um, experience of what it means to be alive. Ooh. To understand that everything is about a pattern of energy. Mm. He said that uh, past sessions that uh, you've had with various mediums have been building up to the conversation you and I are getting ready to have. That everything is energy. Mm. That every form of energy is expressed, has its own unique pattern. Okay. And this is, what, uh, this is what my purpose was when I was living in the physical world. Interesting. Can you go into Particularly, more? you know, he says, uh, you know, most of what I focused on had to do with electricity, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right? Like electrical, different types of electrical energy. Okay. But there was so much more to it than that that much of my work was ridiculed. And it took, what, close to 100 years, if not more, for people to finally catch up with what I was doing. So far, it, it's so ahead of, of its time. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess it's, what, about 100 years or close to 100 years? I or don't know. Like that? I, I can't remember. But like that, that about sounds that. about right. He was yeah. from a long time ago. Yeah. So, um, reflecting on your life, this, this very complicated spiritual mission of yours, do you think you accomplished it? Uh, he says... <clears throat> Okay, so he's just very matter-of-fact when it comes to this stuff. He says, uh, I accomplish everything I set out to do. Oh, so you have, you have a lot so of humility. No, you have a lot of humility. no problem with confidence. Yeah, that's good. Well, otherwise you would not have been able to accomplish what you did. Well, because he says you have to understand that, you know, if you are insecure about what it is you're meant to do, if you do... Uh, you know, and he says, and I don't mean, you know, there are different ways of projecting confidence, right? Some people can project confidence in order to mask their fear, mm. right? And he says, and I won't, you know, in, in the physical body, of course, I could do that. I was human, right? Mm. But when I'm speaking of the confidence from where I am now, right, there's no fear involved. It's just a matter of fact. This is the truth, okay. right? This is what I set out to do, and this is what I was going to do. If I had, you know, fear attached to that, then it could inhibit that. Okay. Whatever, whatever that, you know, mission is. So were you a very confident man when you were a human? Uh, he said most of the time. I was, he said I, could, I would say in, in the moments when I was not confident, I could project confidence. Okay. Now, you dropped out of school for various reasons, and then you had a nervous breakdown. So, mm -hmm. obviously, your confidence hit uh, sort of a well, major... He said, and that's what I mean by yeah. when I would project confidence and no one know. If yeah. you hold on to too much of that, right, you're, you're putting up this facade, eventually it's going to boil, boil over. A kettle can only hold so much steam. All right, so right? tell me about your nervous breakdown. What happened? Why did you have a nervous breakdown? Well, he said in the physical world there could be different, you know, things you could look at that would uh, kind of push someone in that direction, right? Mm -hmm. But he says that I was very driven, number one, right? Mm -hmm. So if you never give yourself a break, if you never relax, then you never recharge and you never can recenter yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he said there's that aspect. But then the kind of being that I am, that my physical body was connected to, the kind of soul that my physical body was connected to, was very driven by energy patterns that a human body is just not able to process. Right? What do you mean? So he said, well, this is why I was so drawn to electricity and different patterns of energy and, and all of this other kind of stuff, right? My soul feeds that to the body that you knew of as Nikola Tesla. Okay. Right? Well, that's a lot of information that a human body isn't able to process. Mm. Right? It overloads the nervous system. Right. So you could say almost it's like I had this overflow of energy flowing through me. Okay. And the brain literally 
uh, it's like there's too many signals flowing through all at once that are that are that the brain just cannot parse through, right? Yeah, and it overflows it. Sure. And with every other thing that goes on in life, that humans experience because of the challenges that we create for ourselves, it just becomes one too many things. Sure. Now they say you said, or and people also confirmed this, that you worked on very little sleep, that you usually had two hours of sleep. Uh, of course, because I, 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 he says, again, that goes back to the kind of energy that flowed through the body, right? I could not, I, I mentioned earlier, he says, I didn't know how to relax and rest, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I believed that if I was going to sleep, he said, I erroneously believed that if I slept, I would miss something, mm. Right? But there was something that could have been done that I didn't do because I was sleeping. Mm. The physical form and then all the things that it requires to be maintained I found to be quite tedious. Okay. And from a spiritual perspective, I, you know, that part of me that would identify as spiritual, you know, judged it as uh, pointless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there is a point to it, right? And I was, I was learning how that you have to learn how to integrate play with what you might label as work. And right? you learn how to do that? By having experienced such a, a kind of life where that wasn't the case, I learned how to do it. Oh, I see. Now, was your I learned the value of, of relaxation and play. Yeah. Uh, you were so driven, you said. Was it in part because you wanted to earn your father's approval? Uh, he just gave a very short answer of yes, and I was waiting to see if he, ex- he expressed any more. Okay. Um, Can you expand on that? Uh, Tell us I didn't about your want relationship. to look. He says he said that the part of me that uh, was had had a lot of uh, like the prideful part of me mm-hmm. didn't want to be seen as a buffoon. Okay. Right. Uh, and so I pushed myself. Harder and harder and harder to prove to, to not just my father, but to many other people, other colleagues, that I was not a buffoon. Of course, it didn't work out that way, mm-hmm. because many considered me to be a quack. Uh, you because know, you were uh, so on even the... Even more of a buffoon, because yeah. I, they, I seemed so out of touch with the reality they were living. Right, you were so far advanced. Right. Okay. T- tell me about your upbringing and... What, how that made you who you are? It's nothing. Oh, hush up, Bella. It's just the doorbell. Okay, go bark. Sorry about that. So uh, tell me about, like, do you, uh, oh, bring your relationship with your parents, whatever is okay, important but, in defining who Nikolai Tesla was. Right, right. He says, he says much of, of, Okay, so the upbringing that I had only, um, what's the right word, reinforced, you know, the behaviors that I had as an adult, Mm -hmm. right, Uh, and reinforced that kind of a pattern of energy that I was naturally um, inclined to be, right, Mm -hmm. with his soul being kind of like this, you know, pumping up, pumping too much energy down, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, so everything was very, uh, he gives me, if I'm interpreting this correctly, it's like everything is like, he's like this taskmaster situation going okay. on, right, okay. where um, you just weren't, you know, play was like a luxury, right? Oh. Um, you know, I mean, this is, this is, okay, I was asking if I was interpreting that correctly, and he said yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> so he said that just reinforces what I became as an adult, correct? Yeah. He said, you know this very well, what a child learns and experiences as, as, as a child, that they tend to perpetuate those same patterns. Okay. Right? And he said, and notice I used the word pattern, right? That's true. Because energy is a kind of, pa- it is, it expresses itself in different kinds of patterns. Mm. And those patterns can then be seen visually in how a person's life plays out. Yes. And that is a pattern of energy. Okay. Now, and, you know, if you were to look at that purely from an electricity standpoint, mm-hmm. he's showing me like how electricity, when it flows through different kinds of, um, what's the word, uh, media, mm-hmm. right, or kinds of matter, mm-hmm. it will show itself in different ways, mm. right? So, like, sometimes electricity will, will flow through and it'll look like, like, um, gosh, well, like, instead of having a lot of jagged edges, maybe it'll be more like a wave, right? Okay. 
Other times it can flow through other kinds of matter and it will look more jagged and like it'll have these little offshoots and all this other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it all just depends on the kind of matter. So he says, so I'm, I'm using that example to, to show you how when electricity flows through matter, which we can then label as a, a physical body that has all these experiences that uh, it encountered during its lifetime, mm -hmm. it fun funnels that energy through it in a way that makes the energy behave in a certain way. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Like literally so tell, talking. Tell me about your relationship with Edison. You worked as an apprentice or, you know, uh, well, I, I know that you worked He said with Edison stole a lot of my ideas. Ooh. <laughs> you know, he, oh. he promised you $50,000 if you made his direct current generator more efficient, but mm -hmm. after you finished after months of work... He uh, he said, you don't understand American humor, you know, when he was asking for, okay, pay up mm -hmm. your 50 thou. Uh, and he only agreed to give him an extra uh, $10 a week. He was making $18 a week, so he got a raise to $28 a week. And so you, Mr. Tesla, resigned immediately. Tell me about all that. He said that was... Uh, going back to, uh, that was really a lesson in uh, standing up to my father. Mm -hmm. Right? So it was, you know, if you want to connect back to my life, mm -hmm. that kind of behavior of being taken advantage of by someone who, to some extent, I saw as a father figure, right? Mm. I guess maybe Edison was older than him or something. Okay, I don't know. probably. Or maybe it was just the hierarchy of it all. Um, so I, I, that was just. You know, I, I felt I deserved more respect than that, mm. right? Sure. And there were many other ideas besides that one that, um, you know, he, he took from me. Mm. How do you get along with him now? Well, you understand that, you know, when you're in the physical body, you're playing a role. So, right. you know, you let that go. You don't hold on to the animosity of it all. Sure. Uh, we understood that, uh, you know, what what I did that he may have gotten credit for, I was still, I still had a hand in creating. Yeah. So, you know, it's in a, it's, it's a co-creation that he got, that he was meant to get the credit for. Okay. Right? I wasn't, because sometimes you're meant to be on the stage, sometimes you're meant to be behind the scenes. Okay. In some situations, and in others maybe, you know, it's the reverse. Okay. Were you uh, here on the earth as Nikolai Tesla to learn anything? Uh, he said, um, he said as it relates to the physical body, it's about what I mentioned earlier, uh, play, right? Okay. Right. What, what relaxation really means, mm. right? Um, and, um, understanding when people cross your boundaries mm. and understanding when you push yourself so hard that you cross your own boundaries. Mm -hmm. Um... So he said that encompasses a lot with, you know, you know, um, with standing up to other people, for instance. There's just a lot of things that can, you know, uh, stem from or feed out from that. Right? Yeah, sure. Okay. So he said those would be the ones I would, for simplicity's sake, I will, I will use. Do you think you example. accomplished your lesson? You learned your lesson. He said absolutely. And did you learn as a human, or did you learn after you were I, in spirit? After I crossed over. I figured, yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, do you have any regrets? Because oh, go ahead. The end of his life, he said, was, I mean, he's projecting all this sadness at the end of his life, like oh. a lot of chaos and stuff like that. Mm. You know, whether it was others could see it or not, it was going on in his brain, mm. like like a tornado. Well, what kind of chaos are you talking about, Nikolai? Emotional, he said. Oh, like, t uh, tell me more. Constantly chasing. He said, well, the chaos came from constantly feeling as if, you know, um, I, I, I believed, especially when I was young, that, I would, that, I'm, a, that I'm a genius, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you don't get the risk, you know, the rest of the world doesn't treat you that way, mm. you either become angry because they don't see you, which is what happened to me, and then at some point you start to even question, well, maybe I am crazy. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's the kind of chaos that comes about. You start losing your ability to trust in in the decisions you made in life, and oh, that's awful. That sort of thing. That's what happens, you know, as uh, 
when I was in the physical body. Yeah. To help you understand the chaos and stuff. So do you have any regrets? I mean, is there anything you would do differently if you had to do it again? Um, he said not to sound, uh, what's the word, immodest. Okay. But I, I really don't have anything that I would regret. Um, because he says regret would in, uh, insinuate to some people that, that that was a choice I should not have made. And every choice that I made, just as every, every choice everyone else makes, is one you're supposed to make. Because? Because it's, it's compelling you, it's pushing you to become more aware, right? And then that awareness then kind of opens the doorway to you actually um, gaining a greater understanding of something. He says when you have an awareness of something, it doesn't mean that you know how to integrate that into your life, right? Mm -hmm. But it does open the doorway to you being able to take the first step to doing that towards integration, correct? Okay, yes. So, for example, you worked tirelessly and had very little time for play. <clears throat> and you gain from that the awareness of how important it is to have a balanced life? Correct. He says, in the physical world, I did gain that awareness. I will say that. But it doesn't mean that I integrated that awareness into practice. Right. Right? Okay. But now that I'm on, the, on, the, uh, on this side, uh, and he kind of says that with like a tongue-in-cheek kind of an attitude, <laughs> you know, I can now speak to, on those such matters. Sure. Right? Which most people would not even assume I would speak on because I speak primarily about energy, but he said that relates to energy, right? Relaxation, all of those kinds of things are different patterns of energy. That's true. And they're much, they have a beautiful waveform to them. Mm. Right? But can you share a life that most influenced your, your one as Nikolai Tesla? Okay. Okay, so, well, I don't know the time period, uh, several hundred years, I'm supposing, before he crossed over, uh, he worked on a, a ship. It looked like a pirate ship, but he says it's not a pirate ship. It was a slave ship. Mm -hmm. So, some kind of slaving ship. Mm. Um but it was even before, this was a long time ago. Oh. Like slavery, he's, he's just kind of giving me some background about how slavery has existed for thousands of years. And it's not, it wasn't always associated with just being slaves from Africa, mm -hmm. right? So this is even before the whole slavery of Africans, right? Okay. There was some kind of ship that was like going across the channel, and he was one of the individuals who, uh, like... They have these big oars. Okay. Uh, very monotonous, constant oar uh, rowing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he said that life, to me, had a lot of meaning, as we're speaking now, because it was, to some degree, setting up the life of Nikola Tesla, right? Hmm. You never stop, and you keep pushing forward with the same thing that, you know, there was, I didn't necessarily consider what I did monotonous, but it's the same focus, right? Okay. So it taught me focus, right? Oh. How to manage that, to, in a sense, to get into that figuratively speaking flow of things, right? You okay. just keep, keep pushing. So he doesn't really go into a lot of details other than that. That's that, interesting. Okay. Uh, that, um... Well, he, he he keeps it pretty simple when it comes to that. Just gives you the high level, and then he says, and then explains why. Well, are you incarnated now on the earth? Uh, he says no. Okay. Um, but there are many lives that he. Okay, so like, okay, <laughs> so he gives me this image of like he hovers. <laughs> okay. Right. So Waiting for I see to people. make his grand entrance. Well, no, no. It's like he's. It's like there are people who might who are doing things that he. Uh, and it's not just related to electricity and energy and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like all different kinds of things that connect to different patterns that he has an affinity for, right? Okay. So, like he shows a person who's working uh, um, as an engineer, mm -hmm. right? 
and he's standing behind them, kind of sending them everything they need to know on some telepathic level oh. to help them understand how to engineer something so that they can, so that that one little piece helps to create something that becomes um, disruptive in a very good way to humanity, right? Oh, okay. So it's like it, it becomes the one little piece that then down the road will create something that is completely life-changing. Okay. Um, um, and I asked him just now about, you know, the cars and stuff. Like, you hear about all this Tesla cars? Yeah, Tesla anything? Motors. Let's talk about how you feel about that. Uh, I, well, because the first thing I thought of was, was, well, is this an individual that is dealing with, at your particular, at that particular company, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said that he does that some, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But he says um, not as much as you would think. Right? It's not like because he says that if I if I really felt compelled to to put all of my energy into that, then I wouldn't really truly be uh, living a life that has let all that go. Okay. Right. I just come in if I'm needed and if it's real, you know, important to the bigger picture of things. Okay. But it isn't just limited to Tesla. So do you, do you know where I'm coming from with yeah. that? Where he's coming from? Yeah. Sure. Um. So the so, work you do in the afterlife, your afterlife is basically you're helping other people like engineers do, you know. There's, there's that aspect of it, but it's not just about mechanical things that we create that funnel energy through it. Mm-hmm. It's also, it's anything that allows energy to flow through it in a way that we identify with as happening, right? What do you mean? So it could, so it could be a Reiki practitioner, right? Oh, okay. It could be a medium. It could be uh, anything with designed. energy flow. It's all about yeah, energy. Yeah, anything oh. like that. Okay. Right? So and it's not something just physical, so like a mechanical thing. It can be okay. a human body or a, a, an organic body that is flowing energy through it, teaching others how to... Um, release things and how to let things mm. go in. Hmm. You know, he says energy is all about that. Energy has to have an influx and an outflux, if yeah. that's the right word. I don't know if yeah. that's the words he gave me. Well, what is your proudest right. achievement? Uh, he said if there was anything I would attach the word pride to, it would be um, what we just spoke of, right? Helping someone else <clears throat> to become uh, awakened to... Uh, something they didn't know that they could do. I see. Right. What was your prize uh, achie- uh, achievement as a human? Uh, some kind of battery. Really? He just said the, the battery. Oh, okay. Right? All right. Uh, did he invent the battery? I don't know. Oh, I have no battery. idea. You'll have to look uh, that up. So where do you think the future of energy is? Uh, also, also, he said something about... Um, Some of the work that he did helped to set the stage for creation of like solar panels. Oh, okay. Um, that's how I. That's how I'm interpreting it anyway. Because I saw a solar panel. So. Okay. I have um, a, just a four more questions because I know we're running out of time. Where do you yeah. see the future of energy going? Uh, to sustainability. Okay. He said that's the simplest answer. Um, where there is no. There's no worry of how much you're consuming, and there is no waste in how much consumption uh, occurs. Now, right? what kind of energy is no, source is that going to be? Uh, there are going to be many steps, several steps, I'm sorry, not many, but several steps to get to a point where we have a limitless, uh, uh, unlimited sustainability, right? Okay. Um, uh, he said fusion is going to be a big step in that, on that path. Okay. Right? Not fission, but fusion. Okay. Right? Um, that, he says, is probably another, well, it'll be widely used within 20 years, he says. Okay. Um, he said, but containment is a very important aspect of that. Okay. He says that the great, th- okay, so he's kind of like getting all excited about the fusion. So he says the great thing about fusion is that unlike fission, right, fission produces a lot of um, radioactivity and, you know, if it gets out, you know, it can contaminate a whole environment. Okay. Fusion is, at least the kind of fusion he's referring to, 
does not do that, right? So if it gets out of its containment, it okay. will. This type of fusion will simply just fizzle out. Okay. It won't produce all of that uh, that contamination, right? But eventually, we will get to a point where we will be able to tap into the pattern that feeds this reality. Mm-hmm. That will become our unlimited source of mm. of of power. Right? Awesome. And it won't just it won't just fuel our mechanical devices. It will fuel our, our bodies themselves. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm. So, what do you think about the state of this? Three more questions. What do you think about the state of humanity now? Just brief answers. Yeah. Um. My simplest answer, he said, which which mirrors what many other spirits have said, is that uh, there's no concern, there's no absence of hope, there's no anger towards how humanity has, uh, um, you know, towards how humanity has uh, affected the planet. Okay. Uh, I see it all simply as, you know, part of a process that is, you know, preparing us to not only sustain this planet, but others as well, okay. in a way that does not, you know, um, harm anything else. Okay. Right? He said sometimes you, he said, so he's using this old cliche of sometimes you have to break a few eggs in order to make an omelet. Oh, right? that's, that's so true. Right, yeah. That's so true. Well, do you have any messages or advice for us? Um... He says, I really have nothing more to add as far as advice is concerned. You're, okay. you're doing yeah, a great job. Yeah, you've done, you've just given us so many things to think about. What do you think about channeling Eric? Any advice for, for us on that front? He said, I, he said, I'm quite happy with channeling Eric because it has also become something, it is, it is one of the many things that I am involved with. Oh, okay. Tell yeah. me more. So it, it's another... You know, he shows like this wall, like a bunch of wall sockets, right? Okay. And he's got himself plugged into all of them, and mm-hmm. channeling Eric is one of them. Oh, <laughs> right. okay. And what so, way are you involved? Well, so did you learn your lesson about relaxation? I guess not. <laughs> he's laughing, and he says, he says, he says, he says, my dear boy, I, sometimes the work is relaxing. <laughs> well, that's true. My work is relaxing. Yeah. So what do you do with channeling Eric? How are you involved? Sorry, I got a cramp in my back. Oh, <laughs> I had to stop for a second. Um, uh, he says, as it relates to channeling Eric, it's helping uh, people who are awakening to their gifts of being mediums and uh, other types of healers mm-hmm. uh, to help them navigate that that process. Yeah, there are a lot of them that are being awakened. That is so by coming true. Coming in contact with it. Uh, so, and I see Eric so helping people help develop their gifts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Eric, do you have any questions for Mr. Tesla? He said the only thing I got to say is, uh, have to say is, uh, you know, I want to thank him uh, publicly, right? Because he's helped me a lot with um, with me guiding other people through really? that process. How? And oh, he said, Mom, he's oh fucking hell. Hold on one second, <laughs> my back just cramped again. Oh. Um, um, well, well, okay. So, so he says. He says the bottom. He says it basically goes back to um, uh, whatever I don't understand. A certain, like, like how to feed someone a certain kind of uh, energy to help them get it. Mm-hmm. Tesla helps me with doing that. Awesome. That's so. great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Tesla. I really appreciate it. He said it's been my pleasure. I really appreciate your time here, and um, I'm, I'm glad you were able to enlighten us in so many ways. He said, well, thank you, and thank you for the opportunity, he says. Okay. Give me a voice. All right, and thank you, Eric. Thank you, Robert. He said, I love you, Mom, and, thank, and you're welcome, sweetie. Okay. Bye. Bye.